Right, lads, have you ever wondered why on earth you're so goddamn bad at this game? Me too. We've all been there, don't worry. If you're trying to improve at this game and you see yourself at a standstill, then I'm here to help with that. I've gotten together five tips that I believe will help you instantly improve at this game. Well, I mean, they're not going to help you improve instantly, like the snap of a finger. But I mean, don't get me wrong. If you keep these tips that I say in mind, it's going to help you improve immensely. So with that little intro out of the way, let's get on to the first tip, and that is to play the meta combo. The best combo in the game, of course, being the Yoshi weight class, the teddy buggy, the rollers, and the paper glider. And I'm going to be pretty blunt about this. If you do not use this combo, you are essentially putting yourself at a disadvantage. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not like the combo police or anything. If you want to play something a little bit off meta to play your favorite, a character or something then you can absolutely do that but if you're not too fussed about the character you're playing and you're playing to win then i would highly recommend playing yoshi teddy as in my opinion it is just by far the best combo in the game and you will put yourself at a severe disadvantage if you don't play it but if you are looking for an alternative there are some combos i could recommend the first one being the exact same combo but with the mario or luigi class instead basically just a little bit of a heavier version of the yoshi teddy combo and if you prefer to play on outside Side drifting bikes then you can also get away with playing both of these weight classes on mr scooty mr scooty having a little bit less speed than the teddy buggy but also a little bit more mini turbo to make up for that yeah of course there are many more combos that you can get away with using online which i will have a video going over those combos soon enough but long story short if you're looking to use the best combo online then yoshi teddy buggy rollers is basically your go-to Okay, next up is making sure you're managing your items well. With this game having so many aggressive items, you know, triple greens, triple reds, boomerang fire, just a name off the top of my head. And also the fact you can hold up to two items at once definitely makes items the most important in this game out of any other in the franchise, I'd imagine. And honestly, it makes team formats like lounge and 6v6 a lot more fun because you can't just be carelessly throwing around your items. You have to be a lot more careful with them and you have to play around your teammate a little bit more, which makes this game a lot more strategic and enjoyable really and also with you being able to hold up to two items it makes items such as the blue shell or the lightning bolt or shock whatever you call it a lot more common so knowing how to play around those items is very very important you know for blue shells sometimes you won't actually want to be playing in first because at the end of the day if you are driving in first a blue shell is bound to come most of the time of course that depends on the scenario though because being in first definitely has its benefits and on the topic of shocks on bagging tracks where shocks are most likely to happen Knowing where the most common shock spots are is definitely essential if you are playing those type of tracks. You know, DP3, Riverside Park, Cheeseland, just to name some off of the top of my head. So yeah, with just how important items are in this game, it makes it just as much of a strategy game as it is a racing game. And if you're of the opinion that items make this game unskilled, then maybe this game isn't for you. You can always go and play a game like Gran Turismo or F1 or something. No shade to those games, by the way. They're definitely very, very good games. And if you're looking for a simple drive fast and win kind of racing game, then they're definitely for you. But yeah, with just how prevalent items are in this game, it's going to take you a lot more than just driving fast to win a race most of the time. Okay, now I'm going to talk about why driving is very, very important, which I know I slagged it off a little bit beforehand saying, oh, you can't win a race with a good driving alone, which is true, but that doesn't mean driving isn't important in the slightest. It's still a very important piece of the puzzle if you're trying to win a race. And I have two main reasons for this. The first one is, well, it's a racing game, duh, going fast is always going to be good, especially if you're front running or something, or if someone has a threatening item behind you like triple greens or a horn and you're trying to stay ahead of them. Being able to drive fast is extremely important for those reasons, of course. And the second reason I have is that driving fast and item management kind of go hand in hand with each other in a sense that if you have the muscle memory down to drive most tracks and you can drive them without thinking about it too much then it makes it a lot easier to manage your items well in the middle of the race while you're front running or playing mid pack or something because you can focus less on your driving and focus more on managing the items that you have and using them well and efficiently and of course if we're talking about playing online you don't have to be taking like crazy world record lines or anything but having a basic understanding of how to drive every track the game decently enough most of the time will do you just finely now there aren't that many guides on youtube of how to drive all the tracks shroomless so i'll leave the link for the no item time trial discord server in the description if you want to go check that out if you're looking to improve your driving but yeah to sum it up driving well and managing your items well are both pieces of the puzzle to winning a race in this game and without both you're not going to really get anywhere
Okay, my next tip is to be aware of your surroundings. A little bit like item management, except you're more so looking around at the enemy players and seeing if they have anything of threat that can kill you. And this ties in with just how important it is to use your rear view. Because if an enemy player has a threatening item behind you, then using your rear view is basically the only way you're going to know about it. I actually have the perfect example of this to show on a recent DKJ race I played. As you can see, the guy behind me is holding a horn and I don't have 10 coins and I can see he's slowly catching up to me by constantly checking my rear view. So I make the play of shrooming up instead of trying to stay ahead of him when I clearly have less coins than him. And if I wasn't so consistently keeping tabs on what was behind me, then quite frankly, he could have just horned me and I would have been a dead man. But yeah, this game can be very chaotic, you know, a lot of items flying around and everything. So being aware of your surroundings and being able to like stay out of all that chaos is very, very important. Okay, the last tip I have for this video, and arguably the most important one, is to not blame everything on luck. Now, at the end of the day, Mario Kart is a party game, so of course there's going to be luck involved. But there's only a little bit of luck in this game. If you have a bad day at the office and blame it entirely on being unlucky, then... Quite frankly, you're just not going to improve as a player. I mean, some people don't like to admit it, but this game does require a lot of skill and game knowledge. And not being able to acknowledge your mistakes and blaming everything entirely on luck will basically just stop you from improving as a player. I mean, there's a reason a lot of the top players of this game have stayed at a top level for years on end. Yeah, I've got to say though, I do think Mario Kart is probably one of the most tilting games you can ever play. So being able to have the mindset of not blaming everything entirely on luck and acknowledging your mistakes is going to immensely help you improve and it's going to help you enjoy the game more as well. Because I don't know, I'm not personally enjoying a game that I'm screaming at every time I play, so that's just me. But yeah, if I had to put this video into one sentence, I'd probably say get good and don't let this game piss you off. Pretty simple. Oh, and like most games, uh, you need to have fun because what's the point in playing a game if you're not enjoying it, right? Anyways, if you think that this video was helpful to you, then do subscribe. I make plenty of competitive Mario Kart 8 Deluxe content, so be sure to stick around for that. And I'll see you in the next one. In a bit, lads.